everyone, my name is Mars, like the planet, and this is Housewarming. Me and my partner have just purchased our very first home, so if you're interested in design, homemaking, and figuring it all out, make sure you subscribe. So today I am actually organizing our downstairs closet. It just has my clothes in it. This house has three closets and it's only two of us. We kind of just use the space that we have. Like there's no reason for all of our clothes to be piled into one room. We might as well just use all of the closets. So beforehand, I did not have any hangers at all. So I just folded my clothes and had them on the shelves. But today I finally got some hangers in. I have them linked below. They're from Amazon, the felt hangers and the pants hangers. So I'm honestly just going through and organizing my closet. I have a lot of home decor in here from my bedroom where I used to live that I haven't gone through yet. So I'm just gonna organize that a little bit. Actually, you know, this video is super straightforward. It's just me hanging up clothes. So I just wanted to take some time just to talk. I mean, might as well. So if you don't know, my name is Mars, like the planet, like I said, and me and my partner have just purchased this home. It is a three bed, two bath townhome. In Louisiana, if you're interested in seeing the house tour, make sure you click the cards or I will have it linked down below or just peruse any of the other videos I have posted. I really want this channel just to show you the journey of owning a home for the first time. We are both going into this blind. So we really don't know what we're gonna run into. We're buying furniture right now. We're just trying to get our life together. But on another note, um, have y'all seen Squid Game? I just wanna know. Like I'm not gonna spoil it or anything like that. Well, maybe a little bit, but have y'all seen Squid Game? Because I watched it on Netflix. We kind of binge watched it because I know there was some like huge hype around it. But did y'all or did y'all not like the ending? Because I'm gonna just ask y'all one more time. Did y'all or did y'all not like the ending? Because I don't know, the ending of Squid Game was just kind of like, I don't, I don't know. It was just, it wasn't giving what I thought it was gonna give. And like characters were doing things that I didn't think a character would do. Also like, like the last 30 minutes just kind of like annoyed me a little bit. But what else have you guys been watching on Netflix? I really don't watch a lot of stuff on Netflix unless there's like some super great recommendations or there's a lot of hype around it. But I actually have like a running list on my phone of like my favorite, favorite all time shows and like series. So I'm just gonna read that list to you and just like let me know in the comments if you've ever like watched these or what you think about them because these are like 10 out of 10 would recommend if you really wanna watch something, pick something off of this list. So the first TV show that I absolutely love, it's not on the air anymore, is Scandal. And to follow that up is How to Get Away with Murder. Shonda Rhimes knows how to write a TV show that will make you come back year after year, season after season. And Carrie Washington and Viola Davis just have my entire heart. I absolutely love those shows so much. I love the drama. I love the overacting. I just love everything about it. The next show is on FX and it's called Pose. And it's really about the ballroom scene in the 80s. And like, it's just a good queer show. It's gonna make you laugh. It's gonna make you cry. It's gonna make you fall in love with like every single character. And also on FX, I love Atlanta by Childish Gambino or Donald Glover. This show is just like one of the most realistic yet unrealistic shows I've ever seen. And the writing is absolutely phenomenal. I think it's on Hulu now, but like the seasons are so far in between because every single character on there is so talented. Like obviously Childish Gambino is Childish Gambino. Brian Tyree Henry, I think that's his name. Like he's going on to do great things. Zazie Beetz has like always been like a great actress. So like it's a really, really great show. Also Breaking Bad. Like I know Breaking Bad came out like 35 years ago, but I binged it on Netflix and I understand the hype like pr I promise you I understand the hype like I absolutely love Breaking Bad like I I I just show people the first episode and they're like oh okay I see this I see this like literally the first episode will have you hooked and then lastly I have to talk about the cultural reset the cultural phenomenon that is RuPaul's Drag Race if you have never seen RuPaul's Drag Race that's why you're depressed that's why your skin won't clear up it has just gone and boomed into this gigantic queer amazing i can't even say all the other words like it is just this amazing franchise now and it is all over the world it is all in different languages and it's just beautiful reality tv show it is drag queens it is fashion it is art it is just so much queerness and i just absolutely love it i love the lip syncs like 
please please let me know that somebody out there is watching rupaul's drag race as much as i am i am like so invested into these queens like my absolute favorite are bob the drag queen and monet exchange i'm subscribed to their patreon i watch their podcast like I just I just love them so much. I also watch Trixie Mattel and Katia Zamaloch whatever her last name is. But I like when I tell you like all of these queens have just such personality and there's like 59 seasons plus All Stars plus Canada plus Australia. Like there's so many franchises to get into. Like it's it's really just like top tier reality TV show. I absolutely love it. So now let's go on to movies. I'm just going to list them off and like honestly, if you've seen them then you know why they're like 10 out of 10 my favorite like my all-time favorite movies like pretend we're on jeopardy right now my all-time favorite movies are black panther mad max fury road mary poppins returns the one on disney plus the lady in the tramp remake on disney plus murder on the orient express moonlight beast of the southern wild hamilton put a note in that because we're gonna come back to hamilton Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Paris is Burning, The Queen, My Name is Zucchini, Parasite, Jojo Rabbit, I know there's a lot, keep keep with me, Wolf of Wall Street, Chernobyl, which is a actually a series, not a movie, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Judas and the Black Messiah, and Tenet. Now, I will say that, like, Hamilton it was a cultural phenomenon, and when it came out, like, I saw the bootleg, bootleg version that someone recorded on, like, their Nokia phone. When it came out on Disney+, Plus, like, I, I swear to you, I've watched Hamilton, like, a million times. If you don't know what Hamilton is, like, first of all, what you doing? But it is a Broadway play about our founding father, Alexander Hamilton, but it's told through rap and with Black and people of color actors it's just amazing like you can listen to the songs over and over and over and over and over again and you'll pick up on something new like when i tell you these are whole bops like they're whole bops i like uh, oh my gosh I, chef's kiss love hamilton okay a couple of more netflix shows and then i promise i'm done okay love the office of course love the office on my block great umbrella academy orange is the new black black mirror russian doll breaking bad i already said stranger things Maniac and Grand Army. Now, I really want to fight whoever at Netflix said that Grand Army only deserved one season because I completely fell in love with every single character and then it just canceled the show. So it's like hard to even recommend Grand Army to anybody because there's only one season. So like, it's like, yeah, you can get in and you can fall in love just like I did, but like, there's no more. There, it, it, it's done. So also a couple other Netflix movies. What Happened on Monday and Beyonce's Homecoming concert from Coachella. I listened to that 8 million times. Like, I absolutely love like. Oh my gosh, Beyonce, I understand why she is the queen bee. I know we all love Beyonce, but that show, oh my God, it's just, it's just great. It's just great. Anyways, so let me know like what your favorite movies are, what your like recommendations are. What is something that like tried and true, everybody you recommended to has loved. Honestly, I will say if you liked Squid Games, then I would recommend a better show, which is called Alice in Borderland, like Borderland. And it is like way better in my opinion. And it's a Japanese film, not a Korean film, but it's kind of like the same premise of like less fortunate people get put into a game and like they could probably die and let's see what happens. And I think the plot is way, way better. The only difference with this is that it's not really like based in reality because they can't leave the game. Like once they're in, like they're stuck in the game and like no one has left the game ever. So I really think that's a good show. If you're also interested in more like, Asian films, Gantz, Zero, G-A-N-T-Z, Zero. It's like a really good movie about players in it stuck in a game that are trying to win a certain thing. I think that one's really great. But yeah, that's, that's my whole rant about movies and TV shows. I'm not like a movie buff. Like I haven't seen like every single movie. Like I will say like I've never seen Titanic ever, but I, there's some movies that I like can watch over and over and over again. Like I'm that person that hears a song and I'm listening to it 35 times a day, absolutely on repeat. But then there's some classics that like I've literally never seen like Dirty Dancing. I don't know her. I'm so sorry. Pulp Fiction. I don't know her. And it's like, I want to go back and I want to like read. I mean, I want to watch like all of these classics, but then like new stuff comes out and I want to watch that. And like, yeah, I, I don't know. Anyways, moving on. So I also want to talk about like living in Louisiana and like being a first time homeowner, which is a complete pivot, but 
owning a home is it's pretty interesting and I really like living with my partner we've been together for like five years now but we do live in Louisiana and I will say that us being homeowners at 26 in Louisiana is totally different than being a homeowner in New York or Portland Oregon or Los Angeles like homes are not a million dollars for like a piece of box like our home is three bedrooms and two baths and it was a hundred and forty thousand dollars so I understand that like home ownership is not a avenue that everybody can take because some homes are just like outrageous and so when you live in the south like yeah there's some bad about it because it's Louisiana but I mean you can own a home like I mean that's perk for you but I will say too that like a lot of people think that Louisiana is just New Orleans and I mean honestly it is because like I'm from New Orleans and like I will say that New Orleans is probably the best but like there are so many other cities that you can visit there's Baton Rouge there's Lake Charles there's Lafayette there's Shreveport there's Alexandria like there's so many other like great cities to visit but I mean I will say that like if you've been in New Orleans like you've basically seen all of Louisiana like if you're trying to visit here I would say to come like people are very very friendly it's great like it's a great time like you'll always have fun I would especially say to like come during Mardi Gras like Mardi Gras is like my absolute favorite holiday in the entire world but you also have to remember that New Orleans is not a safe place for like single people it's not a safe place for women and I'm not trying to say that to scare you it's just more of like don't be out late at night walking by your yourself things happen in an instance like people act crazy especially downtown in the French Quarter in New Orleans like people just be acting crazy and people just be doing a lot of stuff and I'm not saying like someone's gonna come out and like slit your throat and knife you to death but I will just say that like be safe and be smart like don't think that you can just like roam the streets at three in the morning like make sure you have a buddy system make sure you have people with you and just like or just like stay in like make sure you're protecting yourself first but I will say like New Orleans is a great time like it's a lot of good fun and like I said like the stuff Southern hospitality you really can't beat and that's one of the reasons why I don't think I would ever move out of like Louisiana and I know that sounds crazy but I would rather travel and like spend my money on traveling than like picking up my entire life and moving to someplace else and I get it I get it everybody thinks their their state is the best everyone thinks their city is the best trust me I know but when I tell you that nothing no, not one not one restaurant ever has matched Louisiana food when I tell you the seafood here the Cajun food here, the Creole food here, like the fried food here is just unmatched. Like there's nowhere else in the world. Like, I, And I know I sound crazy saying this, but there's no one else, nowhere else in the world that has food like ours. And I know I'm just saying that because I live here and you're probably right. But I will probably not leave Louisiana in the near future. Like I know a lot of people in Louisiana moved to Texas. They moved to Florida. They moved to like Atlanta. They moved to DC. But like, I don't see myself as like a West Coast girl. I don't see myself as an East Coast girl. Like I feel like I'm gonna always wanna be going back. And I know a lot of people are like, I could never like I'm ready to leave I'm ready to get out of here like I don't feel that way like I truly love living here like I said the southern hospitality is just completely unmatched like the way that people will just stop what they're doing and just help you like there are so many people who will just like be a friend to you be neighborly to you when they see that you need help everybody speaks everybody waves and that's not to say that like there aren't like racist people here and there aren't mean people here and we still have the same like violence and like police brutality that all other places in America do but it's not like I'm walking down the street and getting caught like the n-word or it's not like I'm walking down the street and like people are throwing stuff at me like I've actually never experienced that before and that's not to diminish all of the bad things going on here like that's really not that's not what I'm saying at all like obviously Louisiana is very Republican and I'm not trying to get political over here but I'm just saying that like it does have its good points and it's the reason why I'm deciding to stay now maybe once me and my partner get married or we have kids like maybe we think about moving someplace else but like I don't really know a place enough to like pick up my entire life and like move there and some people are like oh well that's the fun of it that's the adventure but it's like okay but that's like vacation like when you're just like oh let's just go wherever but like to pick up sell your house and like buy a new house someplace else and then you're just there you have to find a new job you have to find new friends like you have to find all of these new things and like to me that is just very very stressful like I don't I, I can't even see myself doing that right now but also on the topic of like getting married like me and my partner definitely want to get married but like the idea of planning a wedding like stresses me out like my pinterest board is filled to the brim with all types of wedding ideas but like i just like planning a wedding sounds like the actual most like anxiety inducing thing in the entire world like everyone has like their own opinion everyone wants you to do this then it's so expensive 
Like it costs 10 arms and 10 legs to do anything, to have a nice wedding. And I know you can have a little court wedding. I mean, a courthouse wedding. You can have a little small backyard wedding, but I don't want that. Like if me and my partner are getting married one time, like I want it to be the most extravagant thing in the entire world. And like, I don't even know if I could pull that off. And it's like, I don't want to talk down to myself, but it's like, I want to get married. Like I definitely want to be married. But that wedding thing is just like, oh gosh, like that just, that just super stresses me out. But okay, I, I, I'm, I'm done. I'm done ranting and raving. If there's any questions you have, if there's any comments you want to leave, I promise you like leave them down below and I will get back to you. If there's any questions you have about like home ownership or about me or about Louisiana or whatever, just leave them down in the comments. Also make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. And just remember that like when you comment, when you thumbs up, when you subscribe, that really helps out my channel. That pushes my videos out to others so they can come and join our little family. But I post new videos every single Wednesday. So I will see you guys next week. Bye.